My wife manipulated me to open our marriage and sleep with her co-worker. She did and kept taking it too far so I ended things. To give everyone a quick background, I found my wife sexting a co-worker. She ended up telling me that she wanted to meet with him and have sex. I agreed and even tried to accept it. They met up a few weekends ago and then met up again this past weekend. I tried to like it, I tried to be happy for her, and I tried to make her happy. She just kept showing that she really didn't care for me. First of all, she would not let me set boundaries for them. I told them that I wasn't comfortable with things and that they needed to stop, or at least put a few boundaries in place. She refused, saying that it wasn't for me to say what they can or can't do. This past weekend is what really did it for me. She left Saturday morning without showing a care for me in the world. She made me take pictures of her to send to the guy before she left. She left without even giving me a kiss. At first, she explained that she would be back that night. Nighttime came, and she was nowhere to be seen. The next morning, she tells me that she decided to stay the night with him without even asking or telling me first. That's not even the worst part. That night, he invited over one of his friends, and she messed around with both of them. She didn't even care to ask me about that first. When she arrived back at the house, she told me all of this stuff. I started to get visibly upset. She laughed and said, get over it, and that it's not manly. I couldn't put up with it anymore. She obviously no longer cared for me. No spouse would say anything like this to their partner if they actually cared for them. I was just shocked. At no point in our marriage until the other week did I notice any signs that she would be this way. She had always been the most loving, caring girl that I had ever met. It's like a flip switch when she meets that guy and she changes into a different person. I didn't know one person could change someone that much and that quickly. I'm 99% sure that she is going to end up dating this guy, she has spent the past few weekends together with him and even talks about him around me. The other night, I told her that if she doesn't at least set boundaries, I will leave. She said, okay, and laughed a lot. Without saying another word, I packed up some bags and booked a room at the nearest hotel. I've told my brother about this situation, and he has offered for me to come stay with him for a little while. I ended up going to his place for the night. She sent me some texts that night and the next day. She was acting upset and confused as to why I left, and she was saying that she missed me. The next day, I knew we needed to go back to my house so that there wouldn't be as much of a chance that I would lose it. My brother went with me to help. When we got there, my wife was trying to talk to me. I had nothing to say to her at the moment, so I just ignored her and tried to get past her. She was grabbing me and trying to hold me. My brother helped get her off of me and told her that he would call the cops if she didn't stop messing with me. She ended up leaving. I haven't heard from her since. This situation has destroyed me. I tried to let her do this to make her happy. I didn't want it in the first place, but I tried to make myself like it to please her. I never saw any signs or anything that she would be this manipulative and this bad of a person before we got married. I don't know where any of this came from. She was the most amazing, thoughtful person ever. Now that this has happened, my whole outlook on life and relationships is different. So what advice would you guys give me? Whether it's next steps in dealing with my current wife or in the future when I'm back in the dating game, how do I tell our families and friends? How do I speak to my wife about it? I'm having a really tough time handling all of this. My husband, 38 male, begged for an open slash poly relationship. I, a 33-year-old female, finally said yes and met someone. Now I am leaving my husband for my boyfriend, and my husband keeps telling everyone I am cheating on him. NSFW. Basically, what the title says. My husband begged for this arrangement. He started reading about poly relationships about three years ago, on Reddit, actually, and became convinced that this is what he needed to be happy and that he was coming out as poly. I kept saying no, that wasn't what I wanted, but if he really thought this was what he needed, then we should get a divorce. My husband said no, that was not what he wanted. But he would not. Stop. Bringing it up. He dove deep into all sorts of pro-poly social media and was telling me all these stories of how great it was and how it would bring us closer as a couple. Finally, I think I just got tired of him bringing it up, so I said fine after about a year. We set rules such as open communication and not dating friends or co-workers. 
I also want to be clear, this was not a sex-only, non-monogamy thing, this was full of dating and relationships with other people, my husband started dating a few different women, but they fizzled out quickly. Still, he seemed happy with the arrangement. Until I met Mark. I met Mark in my drawing class. I was really attracted to him and decided to go for it. I was honest about the situation, and Mark said he would be okay trying it out. Fast forward six months. My husband is still going on dates, but hasn't really clicked with anyone meaningfully. Our sexual life has also driven us off a cliff since we started this whole thing, so I think he was having less sex than before, I just didn't feel as attracted to my husband knowing that when we were done having sex, he would get to the bathroom to swipe through Tinder. Mark and I, on the other hand, are so happy and so in love. Mark supports me, listens to me, and is just kinder than my husband ever was. So when my husband asked to close the relationship again, I said no, because I didn't want to lose Mark. My husband lost his sh asterisk t at me, so I went to stay with my sister for a few days. While I was there, I decided that I really wanted to be with only Mark. So I asked Mark if he wanted to just be together, and he said he was afraid to ask me that, because he was afraid I would say no. So I left my husband. It's been a year, and we are deliriously happy. The problem is that my ex will not stop telling everyone who will listen what a horrible cheating person I am. I never cheated. This was his idea. He was still going out with different people the entire time I was with Mark. We live in a small town, and I'm tired of the looks we keep getting. I'm sort of telling everyone all the dirty details about my previous sexual life. What do I do? At this point, Mark and I just got engaged, the divorce should be finalized in six months, and I am thinking of just packing up and moving. TLDR, my husband wanted Polly, and is mad that I fell in love. Will not stop spreading rumors. I 36 males heard my wife 40 females and her partner insulting me during sex, and I'm seriously questioning our future together. I have been ethical mom monogamy yen m with my 36 male and 40 female lads for over a decade. We've had our ups and downs, but generally, it's been great, we have our rules. The most fundamental of which, is that even in the context of N, we would always operate on a bedrock foundation of mutual respect for each other and, each other. As partners, we never got hung up on the not in our bed nonsense. If my wife has a date, I'd rather she be in her own space, where she feels safe and in control and where she knows I have access in case anything goes wrong. We both take partners back to our home regularly. We have no kids, so there's no problem there. We had agreed that if one of us gets home and the other is there with the partner, then we don't disturb the date and just wait until it's over. We've also always gotten off on listening in on each other when this happens, which anyone we bring back home is made fully aware of, usually. We all have a drink together afterwards. I got to my house and she was there with her longest term partner who has been in our lives for about six years at this point. They didn't know I was in the house and I started listening from the landing. They were talking about me in an incredibly humiliating way. He would give her prompts, asking her questions about how pathetic and useless I am. And she would agree about how I can't fuck and I am a poor husband. And she would agree and pile on with name calling and degrading comments about me. For what it's worth, I know it's part of a power, humiliation dynamic, but I don't care. I was furious. It's not an ego thing. I know I'm a go, attentive husband. And if I can allow myself a moment of conceit, I'm a pretty good lay as well. I would never tolerate any partner of mine saying a bad word about my wife. And I would die before I participated in anything that humiliated her, even if she wasn't there. At no point in our end journey did I consent to becoming the object of my wife's derision and disrespect when she's on a date, especially with her closest and longest running partner. I walked into the bedroom a big no-no and told him to get out. My wife was livid and said, no, he's not going anywhere. But I put my foot down and asked him to leave. We had a massive fight. She told me I was being overly sensitive. I told her she doesn't respect me. And some harsh words were exchanged from both sides. That was Tuesday night. And we haven't really spoken since I certainly won't be the first to make contact. And she's been staying at his place all week, which is a major violation of our ground rules. But I also broke them by asking him to leave for 13 years. I've worshipped the ground she walks on, and I refuse to accept the way they talk about me, even in the heat of the moment, it's not right, and I won't stand for it. 
It's really put the future of our marriage into question because I won't move forward with him. Still in the picture, and that will cause a volcanic amount of friction, she really likes him, and has known him for almost half the time she's known me. It would severely disrupt our system, and I know she would resent me for it. But I also know I will resent her if he stays, I feel steadfast in this. But I'd appreciate a sanity check before I make any drastic moves. How I meet women as an ethical non-monogamous, E&M, man. I've seen tons of posts from guys with the same story. The marriage is now open, the wife is getting tons of attention, and you're stuck, and can't find anyone. I've been there. I'm not an expert, but I've had a fair amount of success. I'd like to throw out what has worked for me and what has not, and set realistic expectations. Preface, I'm not a student. I'm decent looking, clean, and educated. I'm 45, white, 5 Ilvin, 175 LBS, decently in shape, and I guess I'm not too hard on the eyes but far from a model. Let's call me a 7 tenths. Differences between men and women. First, I'll say that the experience is completely different for men and women. Men are horny, and women need to weed through a lot of clutter. My wife is shocked when she swipes right and a man has not already swiped on her. Her app will be stuck on 999 plus matches. It's exhausting for her to go through it all. What never worked for me? 1. Sports car. I drove a fancy, expensive red convertible BMW sports car for over 10 years. It was a real head turner. Not once in 10 years did this lead to anything. Not one conversation. Not one impressed woman. Nothing. So while it's probably nice to have a clean and decent car, having a flashy sports car does nothing. Toe. Ripped abs. I was a dumpy office worker over 6 years ago. I started lifting and got into amazing shape. At one point, I was ripped. I had a popping six pack and bulging obliques. I am small framed and was going for the Brad Pitt and Fight Club look. I am happy with my personal results, but women didn't seem to care. My wife didn't like it, and I looked like a tweaker in clothes because I was so small and lacking in healthy fat. Women all seemed to want a guy who's decently in shape but aren't looking for ripped Brad Pitt. They all wanted the in shape dad bod. 3. Having money. I've done very well in life, and I'm looking at early retirement. No one cares. Don't bring up your money or income. I do pay for dinners and dates to be polite but I don't need a sugar baby. You want the relationship to be built on mutual interest. 4. Going to a bar. I've hung out alone at bars and restaurants many times, in many states and places. This has never ever led to a conversation or opened a single door. Other people may be better at this, but not me. 5. Tinder. I hate Tinder. You can't tell if someone's non-monogamous, and it leads nowhere. 6. Feeling. It seems like it would work. There are tons of kinky people in my area, but I never hit it off after many months, and gave up on field. What did work for me? 1. Joined a sport. I joined archery. I met three women in archery class. One was a very famous porn star. The other I helped with her only fans by taking naked pictures of her. And the third really wanted to get me and my wife in bed. Toe. Shibari. I learned the art of Japanese rope bondage and took serious classes. Girls like it. I was crushing on this cute girl at the gym for years. Once my relationship opened up, I asked her if she'd like to learn archery. I have my instructor certificate and she agreed. Before I knew it, I was hanging out with my gym crush, talking about sexy stuff with her. I then asked if she wanted to be my model, and go to Shibari class with me. She agreed and was excited. I ended up tying her up, all half naked. My Instagram is jropists if you want to see all my sexy girls in rope. I'm still in shock that I did that. 3. Embrace kink. I turned into a dom daddy. I put in a lot of effort to learn about it. I bought all sorts of high quality whips and restraints. I take it seriously, and am very respectful. I now have a regular sub that I tie up and do sexy stuff with. Her and I are great friends, and I love hanging with her. It's also a great way to connect with people. Create a FetLife profile and do a munch meetup. Go to a sex club. Just get out there, and meet people. 4. OK Cupid. I like OKC. Unlike Tinder, you can tell if they are non-monogamous. This is my main way to meet women, and I'll share the exact steps I use, and the general success rate. 4 starters. Put that you are E&M in your profile. Don't waste your time. Just have that in there. 1. Open her profile and quickly judge if the girl is even remotely interesting. 2. If yes, expand to see her full profile. 3. Look for either non-monogamous or hookups. If you do not see either, then swipe left. Don't waste your time or energy on her, no matter how cute she is. 4. If you still like the girl and she's E&M hookup friendly, then 5. Read her profile from top to bottom and look for something interesting or that you have in common. 6. Reply to her, referencing her profile, and end it with a question about her. 7. For example, I, I love your profile. I can't believe you rock climb all over the world. I've been getting into rock climbing too. Where is a good place for me to do my first outdoor experience? This shows that you're intelligent, can listen, have social skills, and put the ball in her court giving her an easy and comfortable way to respond back without having to think of something clever or unnatural. Remember, this girl has over 1,000 matches, and she's likely fatigued. Make it easy for her. Don't bring up sexy stuff, 
Just talk to her as the person she is. 8. Wait for them to message you and begin the conversation. Ask them for coffee, dinner, or drinks after a few short days of chatting. Of course, you should really work on your own profile. Google best practices. My success rate is really low, but that's just how it goes. I try to do OKC daily and respond to many girls a day, and I think I get like six dates a year. It sounds low, but it builds up, and these dates always lead to serious and good relationships. I get really discouraged, and it turns into a boring chore, but then all of a sudden, bam, you get a hit. It's like fishing. Eventually, you get a bite, but you have to be patient, and put in many hours. And before you know it, you've hit it off with a new friend, that you meet regularly for events, dinners, and more. My wife could schedule six dates a day if she wanted, but I'm not a sexy woman, just an average guy, and you have to play the numbers. So in summary, get out there, pursue your interests, be genuine, and put in the effort. It's not always easy, but building connections and relationships takes time and patience. Remember, success in dating as an e and individual often requires a different approach than traditional monogamous dating. Being open about your lifestyle, respectful of others' boundaries, and clear in your intentions can make a big difference. And most importantly, prioritize mutual respect and communication in all your interactions, whether it's with your primary partner or potential new connections. Good luck out there. From the perspective of a unicorn, I don't think couples should be instantly villainized. I put unicorn in quotes because I see the word defined in various different ways. Who am I? I am in my late 20s, and I'm a bisexual woman. To be blunt, I really, really enjoy threesomes. I've had probably every gender variation of one, but as a bisexual woman, joining a male-female couple is my favorite. I have also been in a thruple once, but more on that in a bit. A few months ago on this subreddit, I saw a post from the perspective of a couple. I believe it was the bisexual woman half of a male-female couple, titled Stop Hating Couples Who Enjoy Threesomes, or something of the sort. I can't seem to find it. Most people seem to agree with the op of that post, but some people got very, very nasty with them. So I wanted to share my perspective as the unicorn. A little about me, I grew up in a very conservative area and in a Christian home. I knew I was bisexual without knowing the word for it. When I was in kindergarten and developed a crush on a girl classmate, once I got older and understood what it meant to be queer, I knew my family would never accept me spoiler alert, they didn't. And I don't talk to most of them anymore. So I held on to my urges until college. When I kind of went a little wild, explored women sexually, went to pride parades, and learned about things like non-monogamy, swinging, and group sex. Since my early 20s, I have joined in on quite a few male-female couples for threesomes. Most went great. Some not the best, but most were great, genuinely. I guess the point I am trying to make is that women like me exist. I am not the only woman I know who enjoys joining couples. Couples that seek out a threesome are not inherently bad. If a couple posts about looking for a threesome, there is no reason to instantly go ballistic on them. There is no reason to go running to the potentially hypothetical woman's defense. As if she is some defenseless woman who cannot decide for herself what sexual situations she wants to be in. It can come off as incredibly gatekeeping and make women like me feel ashamed for existing for our authentic desires. Yes, not all women who are bisexual want a threesome, but we exist. We aren't exactly rare either. Where I live now is a very liberal and large city in the US. I know quite a few by women who have the same desires as me. I know from growing up in one that it would be the total opposite in a small, conservative city. It definitely depends on the area. From my perspective, however, I think there are some things couples should keep in mind to keep things as ethical as possible. Read bios, read them carefully. If someone's bio says no couples or no threesomes or some variation of the sort, do not message them, do not swipe right, leave them alone on the flip side. Put in your bio what you are looking for and make it clear within the first few messages that you are looking for a threesome, thruple, etc. Do not make any attempt to hide it. How can someone trust you to respect boundaries and exercise consent in a sexual situation if you aren't upfront from the get-go? Remember that the experience is not just for you two as a couple, it's for all three of you. Ask what their sexual interests are, their kinks, their likes, their dislikes, their boundaries. It's not just about you two. If you want it to be just about you two and entirely catered to your fantasies, then maybe a sex worker is a better option for you. This one might be controversial, but if you are questioning your sexuality, 
Be honest with yourself and any potential additional partners. There were a few times when I joined couples where the woman said she was fully bisexual and down. To go all the way, but it was more like she was bi-curious and only willing to kiss. Of course, there is nothing wrong with that, but I was looking for sex. Both parties in the couple should be enthusiastic about it. It should not be a straight guy pressuring his unsure partner so he can fetishize to women. Communicate before, during, and after aftercare is key as well. About that throuple I was in. I connected with them on an app called Field. I guess you can say I was hunted because they were looking specifically for a third partner. We were together for almost a year, and I honestly can say it was a great experience. It ended because the female of the couple got a job offer at a state I had no interest in moving to. It was her dream job, and I encouraged her to take it. It ended amicably, and we still catch up here and there. I was not the victim. I do not need strangers defending me. I developed individual relationships with both of them in addition to building a strong three-person. Unique, it was a good experience, and I would do it again. Growing up in a conservative Christian town, I have always been kind of turned off by the idea of marriage, which is kind of why I have been sexually wild and never really had a long-term partner besides. That thruple. Should I decide to settle down, I probably would prefer to be in a thruple versus a single partnership as a bisexual woman. I like being with both at once, I know, I know. You can be monogamous to one gender and be bisexual, but I, personally, cannot. I cannot marry a man knowing I will never eat vagina again. And I cannot marry a woman knowing I can never suck penis again. That's just me. The ethical non-monogamy and community would be a lot nicer if people were less gatekeeping why, and less likely to pin someone as automatically unethical. This is just my dissents. And I welcome disagreements. My, 35 female, husband, 38 male, violated our playmates, 27 female, boundaries. I don't know how to feel. I have been seeing my playmate, a 27 year old female, for a couple months now, and we always have a blast. E-girl vibes with short red hair were dominant, which attracted my husband to her. So he said he wanted to have a threesome with her, and we then agreed on it. We were playing video games before, and my husband and she bonded a lot over it, and she brought up boundaries, and told me some of hers are not getting pinned down by her wrists. I knew it was trauma related since we talked about it, or slapped by the face, but of course she just dropped that casually to my husband since they just met. He made fun of her, saying that's pretty weird, and he likes to pin someone down and be very dominant when it comes to it. She said that wasn't okay, I called him out on that, and then he apologized to her. After getting more comfortable in the midst of the threesome, my husband started degrading her a little, knowing she likes to dom, and then pinned her down, grabbing her wrists really tightly, and slapping her face. She pushed him off the bed, and my husband got really mad. He was also very drunk and shouted at her, saying he forgot about it, which I don't know if I believe. She just packed her things and left afterwards. I'm currently not really speaking to my husband since I am quite uncomfortable with what I witnessed, and I know I have to speak to him about it at some point. I really like this girl, but now that she's not been answering my texts, I just hope that she is okay. My husband casually told me that it's fine, and we can find another girl. I want to check in on her, and there's no way I can do it now. I feel accountable. My 35 female husband 38 male violated our playmate s 27 female boundaries. I don't know how to feel. I have been seeing my playmate a 27 year old female for a couple months now, and we always have a blast. E-girl vibes with short red hair were dominant, which attracted my husband to her. So he said he wanted to have a threesome with her, and we then agreed on it. We were playing video games before and my husband and she bonded a lot over it, and she brought up boundaries and told me some of hers are not getting pinned down by her wrists I knew it was trauma related since we talked about it or slapped by the face, but of course she just dropped that casually to my husband since they just met. He made fun of her, saying that s pretty weird, and he likes to pin someone down and be very dominant when it comes to it. She said that wasn't he okay, I called him out on that, and then he apologized to her. After getting more comfortable, in the midst of the threesome, my husband started degrading her a little, knowing she likes to dom, and then pinned her down, grabbing her wrists really tightly and slapping her face. She pushed him off the bed, and my husband got really mad. He was also very drunk and shouted at her, saying he forgot about it, which I don't know if I believe. She just packed her things and left afterwards. 
I'm currently not really speaking to my husband since I am quite uncomfortable with what I witnessed, and I know I have to speak to him about it at some point. I really like this girl, but now that she has not been answering my texts, I just hope that she is okay. My husband casually told me that it's fine and we can find another girl. I want to check in on her, and there is no way I can do it now. I feel accountable. Told husband I'm not in love with him anymore. My husband did nothing for me yesterday. Not even the bare minimum. He completely forgot Valentine's Day. And you know what? I didn't care. At the end of the night, right as we usually start our fight fuck routine, I stopped before the fight escalated. Me, do you know what today is? Husband, no, what? Don't change the subject. Me, Valentine's Day. Husband, oh, shoot. Me, it's okay. I don't care. And the fact that I don't care is a problem. I don't love you anymore. Husband, what me, I don't love you. We had a long talk, with lots of yelling. We were up well past 1 a.m. We talked about what's changed, where we are in life, my feelings, his feelings, etc. But you know what? I didn't cry once. And I am a crier. And he never said he loved me either. We didn't talk about divorce. That conversation will come soon enough. Despite being exhausted, I feel lighter. This morning. Like the affair, life, on my end, will be behind me soon enough. I'm going to tell the affair partner today. My girlfriend, 30 years old, cheated on me, 28 years old, with three guys. Should I still maintain our friendship, or delete her completely? I recently found out that my girlfriend had been cheating with three guys simultaneously for the last five months. To be honest, I still cannot believe it because we have been in a relationship for over five years, and she loves me more than I could ever have imagined. She was one of the nicest girls I have ever met. A brief history, we had been living separately but in close proximity for over three years, and we finally decided to move in together. Basically, she wanted me to live with her forever since we started dating. So, we started living together in April 2023, and since then, I could say that she changed. During this time, she would indirectly ask me to avoid touching her, or even sleeping with me. We often had arguments about it, but I ended up trying to adjust. In September, she said she didn't want to have sex with me, because she didn't like it anymore, and had no idea why. She admitted later that she started cheating after this. In December, we had a fight again over some petty issue, and we both cried and promised that we would try to make this relationship work. And the very next day, I found out she went to a hotel with some guys. This is when I realized she was cheating on me, and after confronting her, she admitted that she met three guys in total and had been meeting them since September 2023. She told me that she wanted me to find out because she couldn't say it, and know she did wrong, but she couldn't resist not having sex anymore. Basically, she gave up on the relationship and chose sex over love, I think. I broke up with her, moved out to a new place, but didn't cut all contacts with her. I took all my belongings and some stuff we bought together as well. In the end, she asked me for money because she couldn't pay the rent herself. We lived in an expensive apartment. As a last gesture, I let her keep money from our common budget. $1,000 or more was my contribution, I think. I still wanted to be in touch, and she wanted the same. On Valentine's Day, she again went to some hotel with one of those guys, and now I am still in super crazy emotional pain. I don't know what to do. Any advice on managing this situation would be great. Sorry for the bad writing. Edit, thank you everyone for your comments. Yes. I have lost a major part of my confidence, and am super down, but I needed a reality check on what I was doing. I really appreciate whatever you all commented on. Edit 2, I didn't engage in any sexual activity with her, since September 2023, so no STDs, and I'm clean. Thankfully, https colon slash slash www.red.com, r, adultery, comments, 1 awful 3 t, broke underscore it underscore off underscore on underscore valentine's underscore day break it off on valentine's day just a rant looking for pov i previously posted about a person and was looking for validation in my feelings this forum is fantastic and i got really good feedback anyhow the guy i was seeing sort of has continued his foolishness and non-communication but i popped by the office a few times for intense makeouts etc i didn't understand how you can kiss somebody like you are head over heels in love and then just go no contact for a week there was a planned trip for work that we were both taking staying at the same hotel 
Finally an opportunity to be behind closed doors with just us. I check in. He checks in a few hours later. He doesn't send me his room number or anything. I ask him if we are going to see each other later. And he replies, let's see where the night takes us. Excuse me, we go to the conference reception. Ride in the same car. No flirty text. No messages telling me how amazing I look. Nothing. I decided to get busy. I work the room, talk to everyone there, and pay him no attention. Reception ends. We go back to the hotel. We hook up, but he leaves to go back to his room. I ask him if I will see him in the morning. His reply is, if we are up early enough. WTF. I'm up at 5.30 a.m. I message him and invite him to come back. He says he has to leave soon. He turned down sex. With me, humility at its finest. Fast forward to yesterday. He messages me, good morning, gorgeous. Happy Valentine's Day. I was very taken aback. Surely he couldn't think everything was okay. So I respond to him by telling him that I didn't expect to hear from him anymore. And I I know he's busy, so I respect that. He responded, just because you don't hear from me doesn't mean I'm not thinking about you. Ha 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 a a a. After some more word to vomit exchanges, I'd had enough. I told him he had humiliated me, and that was unacceptable. Nobody should treat me that way. He goes on some guilt king rant and blah blah. So I told him I was done, and that was that. I feel very empowered, and in control. I love it. My significant other is already crappy enough, so I am so proud of myself for not settling for mediocrity again. I'm the radiant sun. One day Hey, someone else is going to see that too. About to embark on an emotional affair with an ex-girlfriend. Advice insight I've thought about it a lot, but things are beginning to gain their own momentum. I don't really want to discuss the morality of it because I'm very well versed and know all the arguments about why I shouldn't do this, but my mind is made up. We are both married, and it's very important that it be kept secret. It's been over 10 years since we've even seen each other face to face. I am deleting all my previous communications and WhatsApp messages with her, and there is no email, text, or WhatsApp chain that can be discovered. Discretion is also very important to her, and she has said that she will do the same, but there is no way I can check this without appearing super controlling. I know if we were to discover it, it would probably be due to a mistake at her end, due to her husband or kids reading our messages due to accessing her phone or computer deliberately, or just because iPhones seem to be linked to absolutely every device 1S family seems to use. To illustrate, when I occasionally watch porn, it is always on an incognito screen, and I delete evidence. Even with these precautions, my wife once had to have a friendly word with me because our teenage daughter had found a search term ID used and was walking around the house saying, Oh my god. Thankfully, it was something fairly innocent, like hot couples kissing. Any advice I am also aware that it could escalate into a physical affair. Part of me kind of hopes it does, although obviously that would make my already complex life way more complex. But I can't deny that I'm very drawn to her and find her extremely attractive. I think she probably thinks of me in the same way. Valentine's Day didn't turn out too bad after all. Yesterday I was immensely in my feelings and triggered. My partner came home from work and told me he'd like to take me to dinner if my belly could handle. It recap, I'm pregnant with hyperemesis gravidarum. I got a shower, got dressed, did light makeup, and curled my hair. I came out of the bathroom and saw on our counter a vase of roses, my favorite candy, and a beautiful card. Inside the card, he mentioned that he knows everything has been extremely tough for me lately. If he could take everything that hurt me back, he would. He's dedicated to continuing his recovery for me and our child. We come first. It was very sweet. And it's so like him because he's always done Valentine's Day in a big way. We had an hour-long talk before dinner about our situation and how we wanted life to look. He talked about things he hasn't opened up about and said he realizes that he still has a lot of work to do. He gave me the floor to talk about my concerns and the sadness I've been carrying. Dinner was nice. We went to see Bob Marley's One Love, and it was a beautiful film. And we went home. And I felt so close to him that I wanted intimacy. It was passionate and loving. And then we talked for two hours before going to sleep. I know it's a small victory for a rough day, but it gave me some hope. I found out that my wife has a massive crush on her boss. I've given her everything for years, and she's considering leaving me. I'm 30 years old, and she's 28. Her boss is 37. A bit of history. We've been together for 10 years and married for 4 years. 
We recently bought a house, and she has been acting very strange since. We haven't had sex in six weeks, and I've been rejected at least eight times. Compare that to before we bought the house, when she and I were having regular sex and talking about having kids. In the first week of January, she had a crisis of self, and she started going to therapy immediately. She sat me down three weeks ago and said that she couldn't live like this in our marriage anymore. She said she didn't want kids now, and she has been unhappy in our marriage for years. I asked her if she was saying she wanted to go to couples therapy, and she said she didn't know. I asked if she wanted a divorce, and she said no. I asked if she intentionally waited until we got the house just to get a divorce, i.e., insinuating she used me to get the house, and she said no. I don't believe her at all, though, everything is far too coincidental. For years, she said she was on the fence, leaning against kids. For years, she wanted a house, but the market wasn't right, and we couldn't afford it. But soon after I got a higher paying job, she changed her mind about wanting kids and started really pushing to get a house. I'm worried that she played me and told me what I wanted to hear. For years, I've been working hard to be a good husband. I compliment her a lot. I make her dinner all the time. I touch her, hug her, and do everything I can to make her feel loved. I initiate sex a few times a week, and I usually get rejected. We have sex about once a week, and 50% of the time she's into it. I'll send her flirty messages and nudes, and I get nothing in return. I'll buy her flowers and bake her cakes, and she complains that I'm wasting money, and she doesn't want cake because it's too many calories. Never a thank you there. Now, the crush. She has always had an affinity for kind older bosses. Her current boss is kind and attractive. He is also happily married, from what I've heard. As soon as that switch flipped and she started questioning our marriage, I got suspicious. I know her Reddit account, but she doesn't know I know it. So I checked her account and found a post about how she has a massive crush on her boss that she knows is not reciprocated. She was questioning whether she should confess to him or not and how she felt. She brought up how she thought of me as a roommate. She said she was so sick of the way our sexual life was going. She said she talked to her therapist about her crush, who validated it, said it's normal to have a crush, and thanked her for being brave for bringing it up. I don't know how to feel about that. Further discussions. Last weekend, we talked about us. She said that she is tired of not feeling wanted and desired and lusted over. She said she wants to have sex and does not need to initiate it. She said she was always so focused on how I felt, so she never enjoyed herself. Then she brought up opening the marriage to make me happier. She said that she thinks she's holding me back from being happy, and I would be happier having sex with other women since she doesn't have enough sex with me. I refuted, saying I can't have sex without an emotional connection, and I wanted to have sex and be intimate with her. I asked her if she wanted to open the marriage to have sex with other people, and she said, no, and could not look at me. At this point, I'm at a loss. I try so hard constantly to be a good husband, and I feel like she played me and won. She got the house, and she would have said and done anything to get it. And now she's eyeing other people. What do I do? Do I confront her? So last year, I quit my job and moved to another continent for my wife's job. Things seemed great the three months I was there, and they felt solid before we moved. We had plenty of conversations before moving about whether we were in a good enough place to move. So after three months there, her job takes her to the other side of the country regularly, where she has to deal with some heavy humanitarian stuff. She comes back from one trip, and she says she doesn't feel any more physical attraction. This is one day after having sex which I guess was her verifying it wasn't working, the next couple of days, she says she wants a separation, and I leave after 10 days, she said she was open to counseling and that she still loved me, but only in a platonic way. I was given a bunch of different little reasons why she stopped finding me attractive, like some of the issues I've had with a late adult ADHD diagnosis and a period where we both got sick with COVID where we were a little out of our minds, but that was like two years ago. And we had been having a great time for the last year, all that to say, when she went to share the old vacation photos, she shared every photo on her phone, including screenshots of some WhatsApp chats, 10 days after I left. She's texting her coworker to pack a bag and stay the night. She insists that it was just because he was a doctor obstetrician gynecologist, and she was sick malaria. She later said she slept with the guy, but it was like a month later, all this time. 
She's still saying she loves me as her best friend and saying that we're separated. But if somehow we work out, she's not opposed, largely. The message was that we were headed for divorce, that she wasn't closing the door. So yeah, I know it's over. I've lawyered up. I don't really care what she's doing, but I wanted a second opinion on one last thing. Was this infidelity? It feels like she did and said every single thing a cheater would do with the exception that she was upfront that she was going to hurt my feelings and unilaterally end the nine-year marriage and 14-year relationship. She maintains it was all okay because she declared separation. Thanks. Edit. I'm really less concerned if this has been going on for a while or what other nonsense she's been up to. Assuming she's telling the truth and giving her every benefit of the doubt. I want to know if it still counts as infidelity. If there was no hanky-panky prior to her saying we were separated, I'm not getting back together with her. I just want to share my feelings without projecting anything more on her. How to recover after an emotional affair. My 35-year-old female, husband, 36-year-old male, and I have been together since we were seniors in high school, have been married for five years, and have a three-year-old daughter. 2023 was not a great year for us. He lost his job and had a difficult time finding employment for five months before an old co-worker of his offered him a job at his company. I had no reason to suspect that he was doing anything outside of our marriage. Sex was good, and we communicated well, or so I thought. Recently, we were lying in bed one morning, and I caught a glimpse of one of his text messages that said, Good morning, beautiful. I obviously confronted him a bit, t but he danced around the subject and gave some bullcrap reasons as to why I saw what I saw. I accepted his response, I'll bit cautiously, why and forgot about it. We are leaving for a family vacation this weekend, and my husband misplaced his iPad, so to help him, M I charged his Apple Watch and tried to see if it was linked to his Apple ID so we could try and ping it. Curiosity got the best of him, e and I opened his messages on his watch and saw some explicit text messages to one of his female friends that he knew from high school. I again confronted him, and this time he didn't deny anything. I asked why he did what he did, d and he couldn't give me a reso, other than that it started when he wasn't working. He swears nothing physical ever happened. He was very apologetic and remorseful, to the degree that he was crying. I've never seen him cry besides when his dog died. He said he would do anything to make it known that I'm the only one for him. I'm just on a bit of an emotional roller coaster right now, and I don't really know how I feel. He offered to go to marriage counseling, which I'm not opposed to, but I know that gaining back the ability to trust him is an uphill battle. At this point, I'm not looking at divorce, I'm just looking for any insight on how to proceed from here. I kissed someone else. And now I'm confused. Or did they kiss me? Does it actually matter? As the title says, I'm so confused now. I've been a long time lurker on these subs, and this is my first post. So I just like to set the record straight. I'm the betrayed partner in the relationship, or whatever it is now. I apologize if the format is off. I'm using my phone for some backstory. It's been nine months since D-Day. I, a 27-year-old female, caught my wayward partner, a 28-year-old female, on my birthday of all days. I was suspecting something was going on a few months ago, as she was showing signs of being less affectionate, on the phone, always working late, and more. Anyway, she was extra standoffish on my birthday, and the days leading up to it, she would keep putting off planning what we could do that day and says she might be busy with work. She didn't even greet me until I reminded her that she was leaving for work, so I just made dinner reservations and texted her the details. My work hours are a bit flexible, so I was home early, but as it was getting later and past her office hours, I was getting concerned. I tried calling and texting with no answer till eventually she texted back, saying she met me there. By then, I just knew something was going on and just saw red. I went to her office, and I found her with her coworker. I think you guys can fill in the rest. I've met this individual a few times at work events. And my god, it's true that some cheaters really cheat down. I don't mean to disrespect others, but the guy was a real sleaze. The next few months have been really hard. My wayward partner was still in the affair fog at the start, saying that they loved each other. But once it lifted, I finally got the timeline. They've been having an emotional or physical affair for five months, with some light flirting at the start. But turning physical at the Christmas party in 2022, she and her affair partner lost their jobs since she reported everything to HR. The problem is that she has been in this shame spiral since it all happened. We would have long talks here and there. She would help me get through my triggers, but sometimes she's just inconsolable. She'd have these depressive episodes where she wouldn't even get out of bed. She moved to our spare room 
She couldn't hold a job and eventually stopped looking for one. It got more frequent to the point where it started to escalate, especially when I asked if we could talk. She'd get defensive and by then we were just arguing left and right. At this point, I was fed up and asked her to move out about three months ago. She's with her sister about an hour away and it's been like that since then. We have limited communication, but it's increased a lot since then. I think her moving out really opened her eyes and really snapped her out. She's finally getting help and has medication now. We've seen each other a few times. We had one date night, which she planned, and she came over and made dinner for Christmas. I'm sorry for the long backstory, but back to the main problem. Since D-Day, I don't think I've been able to heal from what happened. The arguments before were just reopening the wounds. Maybe they were even making things worse. I don't think I see her the same way anymore. And it hurts that I think that because a part of me still loves her, I still cry myself to sleep almost every night. I'm glad she's finally getting the help and making progress. But sometimes I feel like it's not enough, like it's too little, too late. The other day, my best friend, let's call her Bella, came over. She has been my rock through everything and, a lot of times, acted as an intermediary for my wayward partner and me. It wasn't a good night, and I needed someone who wasn't my wayward partner because, frankly, I still don't really trust her. Alcohol was involved, and she was consoling me while I was crying. I don't know how. But at one point I realized we were kissing, and I liked it. After that, Bella and I were both freaking out. She was apologizing profusely while I was kind of just stunned, and when we calmed down a bit, we finally got to talking. Apparently she had a crush on me, a long time ago. I've known her longer than wayward partner, and she promises me that she got over it. At least she thinks so, now she doesn't know. She said that all those times she comforted me might have brought some of those feelings back. And tonight, with alcohol, just made her do it. She kept apologizing afterward and told me she understood if I didn't want to see her again. I told her I might need time to think, and we ended the night there. I haven't told my wayward partner yet. Should I? We're not really in reconciliation, but we haven't broken up yet. I do still love her, but like I said before, I don't feel the same way anymore. I know for a fact that she wants reconciliation, but we haven't really talked about it. I'm so confused. I'm also so sorry for the long post. My sister says what my husband a 31-year-old male is doing to me a 23-year-old female is wrong, but I don't think so. Throw away, obviously. I'm here because my sister recently found out what has been going on and she called it abusive. She has been really mad for weeks. My husband and I have different views on how often we want to have sex. For me, I would be okay with once a week. But for him, he wants it pretty much every day. He has always been like this, and I didn't he really see a problem with it. I know just in general that men are more apt to want sex. So when my husband wants sex, I just give it to him. It doesn't necessarily feel good for me sometimes it does, but it takes a lot of foreplay, and I understand he doesn't always have time or energy for that, but I do it anyway. If he can tell I'm not enjoying it, most of the time we will just change positions. Well, my sister a 25-year-old female and I were talking about her new boyfriend. She told me how much she loves having sex with him. I said that as good. It's good to have someone who matches your wants. She immediately started to question me about my husband. I explained to her basically what I said up there, and she said that it was not okay, very wrong, and borderline assault. I don't see it that way, but I don't know, maybe she s right. My sister doesn't he like my husband after a few other incidents. She lives a state away from me, but I never updated my husband to be my emergency contact. When I had to go to the ER a few weeks ago, they called her. She s hated my husband since that day. So I guess I'm asking, do you agree with my sister or is this fine? I lean towards fine, but I'm open to hearing others, non-biased. Am I the bad guy here for kicking my roommate out and tossing his stuff in the trash after finding out he messed with my food? I, a 24-year-old male have shared an apartment with Andrew, a 25-year-old male, for a year. We found this place through some friends, and honestly, everything was pretty chill, until this whole thing went down. My name is on the lease, and Andrew would just Venmo me as half of the rent. We never had any formal contract between us. We were having dinner with some friends, and we were drinking, chilling, 
and having fun, one of our mutual friends made a joke about me being very tidy and Andrew being very chaotic in terms of our rooms, cleaning habits, and stuff like that. Our friend asked us if that was a usual problem for us, so for some reason, Andrew decided to mention that, whenever I'd get too annoying, about cleaning the apartment or whatever, instead of fighting, he would go, and spit on my food, straight out spitting, on my food, we were all laughing it off, but then Andrew went to the kitchen and demonstrated, how easy it was to just take, one of my prep meals for the week, open it, and spit on it, he did it right there in front of us, we were still laughing, in a what the fuck is happening kind of way, after our friends left, Andrew tries to play it off, asking if I'm okay with what he admitted and apologizing for it, but I could sense he was dead serious, we ended up having a heated argument, and I was furious, I told him he needed to find another other place to stay, and he stormed off to his room, slamming the door behind him. The next morning, he heads off to the gym, and in the meantime, he sends me this long apology text, but when I didn't respond right away, he lost his cool again, saying he doesn't regret it, the spitting incident, and even cracking this disgusting joke about messing with my food, suggesting I avoid eating my ice cream because it's flavored, now, just the thought of it made my stomach turn, so, I wasted no time, while he was out, I gathered up his belongings, and tossed them in the trash, some of my friends think I went too far by throwing away his stuff, but honestly, it felt like my only option, I couldn't bear the idea of having him around after that, honestly, I'm kind of embarrassed to tell the full story to most of my friends, and family, especially mutual friends, I just tell them we had a fight, so I've been called an asshole on more than one occasion, plus, I'm not the best at getting jokes either, am I the bad guy here? My, 38 year old female, longtime friend, Rachel, 39 year old female, has been married for 12 years, and they've been trying to have a baby for as long as I can remember. Rachel can get pregnant, but no matter what, she always miscarries, or has an early stillbirth. She has had almost 20 pregnancies, and suffered losses. I feel so awful for her, all she wants is a baby to love. The last time she was pregnant, she made it to 21 weeks before the baby died. I don't know the full medical diagnosis, I haven't asked, and she never offered, but she has apparently been told she may have a genetic defect and may never carry a child to term. But she keeps trying. She has pushed away friends and family because she is so obsessed with having a baby. If anyone has suggested she just stop trying, she cuts them out of her life. The other day, she found out she was pregnant, and when she told me, I just couldn't muster up the energy to be happy for her. I just feel sad that the same thing is going to happen. The baby is going to die. She could tell I wasn't exactly ecstatic and asked me what was up. I asked her if she had given any more thought to adoption in case this pregnancy didn't work out, and she exploded. She called me everything in the book and told me she never wanted to talk to me again, and I would never see her baby. I'm at a loss. I know now that I shouldn't have suggested adoption, as it's none of my business, but it's wearing on me to always have to hear about another loss. Besides that, I truly believe she needs intensive therapy, as she's never processed the losses, she just moves on to trying for another. Do I try to salvage the friendship or let her go? My boyfriend 22 male left me 23 female alone in a bar in a foreign country on Valentine's Day. My boyfriend and I are currently on a city trip in Prague. It was supposed to be a cute getaway for Valentine's, but it has turned out to be a disaster since yesterday evening, yesterday. We were sitting in a bar after our dinner and having a drink. I was telling him about my recent trip to London with the university, where we visited an architecture firm and had dinner and a drink with the associates in a nearby cafe. During this dinner, the employees of another architecture firm entered the pub, and the associates we were dining with pointed out that we could perhaps arrange an appointment with them as well since they have an interesting practice. I lost the game of rock, paper, scissors and took it upon myself to go ask if we could get an appointment. I approached one of the employees a man and said, hello. We referring to our table are students from University X. We heard you work at Firm Y and were wondering if we could visit your office this week on our study trip. My boyfriend got very upset, explaining that he thought it was wrong that I had to go up to the man and use my charms to ask for this appointment. Consequently, he said he was leaving and asked if I would come to which I said I wanted to finish my drink, so he left me alone there while I was drunk. And it was 12 a.m. I took my time to find the way home, and ever since we've had that argument, he hasn't been talking to me. He claims I should have told him this when it happened, to me. It's not a big deal. I thought it was a normal conversation. Is he too insecure? Or am I in the wrong for not telling this earlier or talking to this man to make an appointment? 
Am I the asshole? Fiance's ex at the wedding party. I am 27 female, and my fiance is 33 male. We have been dating for about 4 years now and got engaged last year. Prior to us dating, my fiance dated his childhood best friend, Liz, for 8 years. They were briefly engaged before calling it off. From what I was told, they decided to break it off because they were getting married for the wrong reasons. They were planning to get married because it was the next step and since their families were best friends, he needed to marry her. After they broke off the engagement, they remained friends. Since the beginning of our relationship, I knew Liz was in my fiancé's family's lives. Liz and my fiancé's MOMS are best friends. Liz is also best friends with his younger sister. My fiancé and I are friends with the same social circle. I don't have a problem with Liz and her friendship with my fiancé. I actually like her as a person and would consider her a friend. However, there are times when we hang out that I feel left out, like I am the third wheel, because of their inside jokes and shared childhood stories. I have always tried to be open-minded about their friendship since he assured me that they were only friends. And I do trust both of them. My fiancé and I are finalizing our wedding party now. Since both of us have best friends who are of the opposite sex, we agreed that it's okay to have the opposite sex at our own wedding party. I told him who I wanted to ask to be at my wedding party. He mentioned that it would mean a lot to him to have his sister be a part of my wedding party. I get along with his sister well enough, so I agreed to include her. When he listed his wedding party, he mentioned Liz. I was taken back. I told him that I wasn't comfortable having her at the wedding party. I told him I was more than happy to have her attend the ceremony and reception, and that she can sit with his family and be in the family pictures. However, that wasn't good enough for him. He said that it's his wedding party and that it was his decision who's going to be at it. I have the right to choose my own wedding party so he should be able to choose whoever he likes. I told him that's not fair because I'm not having my high school sweetheart in my wedding party. This is becoming a huge fight between us. He said he was putting his foot down and Liz was going to be at his wedding party. I told him that I would not budge on this. Out of anger, I told him to choose me or her. If she's at the wedding party, then I won't be standing at the altar. He responded by telling me that I was acting crazy and that he's going to stay with his brother until I calm down and be reasonable. It has been three days now. He has texted me twice since the fight. First time to ask me if I have calmed down and ready to be reasonable. The second is to ask me if I have agreed with his wedding party list. I told him my answer is still no and that I don't know if I can let this one go. Am I the asshole? Should I just let it go? My girlfriend, 25 female, and I, 27 male, were planning a date night based on an idea she found online. It involved a movie night, where we both selected films, and then went out to buy food. To decide on the food, we decided to use rock, paper, scissors for starters, mains, desserts, drinks, and snacks. Initially, I thought it sounded like a fun idea, and agreed to it. During the selection process, I ended up winning the drinks, dessert, and snacks, while my girlfriend got mains and starters, so we split up to buy them. When I saw that she had chosen food I knew I didn't like, I asked if she could change it for something else. However, she refused and insisted that it was her choice, and she should have the final say. I tried to explain that while it was her choice, it seemed fair to pick something we both enjoyed, as I had done with all my options. Despite my reasoning, she remained adamant about sticking to her selection, stating that she shouldn't be pressured to change what she had chosen, and she wasn't asking me to change my picks either. In handling this situation, I would suggest having a calm and open conversation with your girlfriend outside of the heat of the moment. Express your feelings and concerns about wanting to ensure both of you enjoy the date night together. Try to understand her perspective as well, and find a compromise that works for both of you. Perhaps suggest finding a middle ground, where you can both enjoy some aspects of the meal, or agree to alternate who gets the final say in future date night decisions. Communication and compromise are key to resolving conflicts like these in a relationship. AITA for telling my girlfriend that I found a past mistake of hers pretty amusing a couple of months ago. My girlfriend started working in a new role for airport ground operations, which involved driving and obtaining certifications. The day she started, her company made a LinkedIn post with a picture of her about how she was the first woman joining the team and also encouraged more women to apply and get certifications. Literally the day after, she messed up badly at work and crashed a vehicle into a plane. No one was hurt or anything, but the plane was damaged, and a flight had to be delayed. It was really silly since she accelerated when she thought she was braking and made it worse. The same had actually happened to her while driving on the road once when she rear-ended a car. It's been a few months since that happened, and I obviously didn't say anything to make her feel too bad at the time. However, we were just talking about it in conversation, 
and I mentioned to her that I found it pretty amusing since she messed up the day after they made that LinkedIn post about empowering women in these careers. I thought since it's been a while we could laugh at the irony together, but she called me a jerk and accused me of making her confidence worse. She now works a different job in retail, so it's not like she's still working there. 